Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking about the clipping feature in Crest, which is the ability to remove water from an area of the world or to specify an area where you want water and have the system remove the rest of the water so you can do one or the other. To demonstrate this I'm going to remove the water from this area of the level in this space here. So to do this I'm going to create a a bit of geometry that's going to give the footprint of that area. So from a top-down viewpoint, I basically want to I'll set this to zero to put it close to the sea level. And then I'm just going to take some geometry and make it cover the area that I'm interested in. So like so um, and just be much bigger. And yeah, it's always from a top-down perspective. So I'm just making sure that I've got the footprint um, covered. I could go into orthographic view and dial this in, but I think I'm just going to do it quite roughly and it should work okay. Uh, so let's say this is the area I want to remove. It's got a collider component, which I don't want. Um, so yeah. So the next step is to register this with the system as a clipping area. So I can say register clip surface input. And it's not done anything yet. Uh, there's a a notification on the component that it, the material assigned to this renderer is not the type that it expects. It wants a material with the shade of crest inputs clip surface. But moreover, there's actually a material we ship request uh, called clip surface remove area. And that will actually take us a chunk out of the surface and remove that footprint from the surface. Uh, the next thing we want to do is make sure that we have the clipping feature enabled on the ocean. So if I go down and find clip surface data, uh, that should enable the feature. And the last thing I need to do is enable it on the ocean material. So now that's removed uh, an area that I delimited with that cylinder away from the system. Note there were a few steps I had to go through there that weren't really messaged very well on the UI, but we have a pull request right now um, which actually adds messages for each one of those steps to the inspector, so that will get better. Uh, but yeah, this is my uh, area that I'm removing from the world and um, I'm free to move that and orient it and uh, do all the good stuff to make it tweaked and working. So. That's great for removing an area and obviously I can have multiple of those shapes if I decided that I wanted to remove another area, um, which I do not want to do that. But I can also demonstrate the inverse situation where actually I only wanted water in this area. So for that, uh, there's a, a different material called include area. If I start off by selecting that, you don't really see too much because all of the ocean is there already, and I've told the system to also include this area, but what the system is not doing is removing everything else. That's the missing piece. So what I want to actually do is change the ocean system default setting for the clipping from nothing clipped to everything clipped. And now that's gonna to default to just removing everything from the world, except for the clip inputs which have the include area shader on it. So once again, um, I have a lot of flexibility with how that works. And um, I think that's the basics for setting up clipping. There's also an input. Yeah, I can demonstrate this as well, actually. So uh, let me switch this back to the default, nothing clipped. And then let's take this cylinder shape and make it a bit more of a cylinder again. And I will actually put it back to, actually there's a third material type called clip surface convex hull. So if I select the convex hull version, this guy is actually doing something that looks very similar right now, but you'll see the difference if I move it up. This is actually carving that shape out of the surface. So all it needs is a convex mesh, um, which can be any primitive or anything you order. Uh, you author, and then uh, it will re remove that from the surface. So if I now orient this in some way and move it around, you can see that it's kind of 
sorry, let me try and make this clearer. Yeah, you can see that it's now removing the intersection of the cylinder with the water surface. This is very useful for things like boats where you don't want boat, uh, you don't want water to appear uh, on the deck or within the volume of the boat. So you can slap on one of these components and um, it'll carve out the shape out of the water, which is very useful. So I think that's it for the basics. Um, I'm going to move on to a more advanced topic now. This looks good and it's working well, but if I turn off clipping off the ocean material, so this will stop the shader from actually clipping and removing the surface. You see that there's actually ocean geometry everywhere. And when I clip that, when I turn on the clipping, the pixel shader is now aborting the shader and um, discarding the fragment when it's outside that area. But the geometry is still being submitted for the entire area. So it's not, this might actually also be clear in wireframe. Yeah, you see there that when I switch to wireframe mode, there's geometry everywhere, even if it removes it at the last step. So it's not the most uh, efficient solution. We have something a bit more efficient, but more technical. And it's kind of in a test state at the moment, a preview state, I suppose, which is the water body system. What this is gonna do is it's kind of a wizard and this window is accessible from window crest create water body here. And what this will do is this will set up an object where it'll set up the clipping. It can also generate waves in that area, but it also adds a third component that removes tiles that don't overlap with this area. So it'll remove all of the bits of ocean surface um, except for just in this area. And we'll see what that looks like now. So if I click create water body, it's going to create a gizmo, which I can use to tell it where it will be. And it's got this gray plane for visualization. And then I can set the size so that it's roughly in the right place. Like so. And I can then select which components I wanted to create. So if I want to capture the heights of the terrain so that the water knows, the water system knows where the water is shallow, etc., I can click that. But I already have a depth cache set up. And we have a separate video um, that talks about depth caches, by the way, if you're interested. I can also tell it to create Gerstner waves just in that area, um, which is an efficient way to simulate them there. But I already have Gerstner waves set up, so I'm not going to bother. I do want it to um, create a clipping object that will include the area. So I'll click that. And now if I click create and hide that old cylinder. Now you can see it's done a very similar job. So it looks basically the same as before. Uh, so you might wonder why bother going through all those steps. But if we go back to wireframe, we suddenly see a very different picture so all of the bits of the ocean surface that were not overlapping with that water body have now been discarded um, and they're not even submitted to the GPU. The precision of this reduces as you go further and further back in the distance. So you can kind of see that these are kind of the chunks of the surface and they get larger and larger the further you are away. Um, so it, it becomes less and less accurate in the distance, but it's still very accurate and you can see that it's not submitting very many verts to be processed and um, if i can zoom back in here you can see that once the clipping feature is enabled um, and you're switching back to rendering mode like this um, yeah you don't see any of that imprecision at the boundaries because the clipping does a precise job so yeah, and once again, you can duplicate um, and have multiple of these guys around the level and um, it's not set up properly, so it's gonna look a bit funny, but this is the most efficient way to have localized water in the world. So given all of that, you may wonder if the best approach is to include all of the water by default and then carve out holes or to exclude all of the water by default and then just include the parts that you want. 
I would say it kind of depends on the level. If you have a world that's predominantly land and you just need some motion in the background, maybe you want to default to excluding and then have areas like this where you're going to include the water where the ocean is. Um, but it's really up to you. Um, and I, I would advise trying both approaches and seeing what works best for your production. So with that, I think uh, that brings us to the end. So thank you for listening.